welcome to this tutorial about RF transmission. We're going to be learning about RF links, building a circuit, and more importantly, perhaps discussing the theory of how it is that, you know, a, a bit of code, a message gets transmitted from one of these transmitters to one of these receivers. And that's a very important process because it's everywhere in our lives. Um, your mobile phone works on this principle your radio in your car the satellite transmissions for both you know satellite channels or satellite phones um and it's it's something that's rather simple um for the basis of it is we generate electromagnetic waves um electromagnetic waves are everywhere the light is electromagnetic radiation so sun bathes us in electromagnetism we ourselves reflect it around and all it really is, is charges, so electrons generally, although you could have positive charges do the same thing, are bouncing up and down or being shuttled forward and backward. Now this happens inside like atoms when electrons jump up and down from shells, or you can make it happen like with oscillating electric current. So an example of like how I could generate light if I was Superman would be I'd wave my hand like this at you, but instead of like doing it a couple of times a second, I'd do it 400 trillion times a second, in which case you would see red light coming from where my hand is. And if I did it at like seven, it'd probably be purple light. So if it's that simple, if we create electromagnetic waves simply by shuttling charges forward and backward, then creating electromagnetic transmissions should be pretty easy. And I've got a, a diagram on the board here of what effectively goes on. Um, so this here looks like an electric motor and it, it, it could be a common AC motor. And all we do here is we could um, get charges to be aligned in one way then another way. So effectively we've got some plus charge over here a minus charge and the electric field goes from plus to minus but then we can switch it around and have pluses down there minus is up there then we change the direction of our field to plus and minus and if we do this all the time effectively what we're doing as time goes on is creating electric fields that go up down so these are these are electric field and electric field is a vector. You don't need to know what a vector is, but so all you get is this kind of wave of propagating electric field that go up and down. And some of you have guessed it, but what this equates to is like a sinusoidal wave. So if we start up, we'll go down, then up, then down, then up, then down, then up, down, up. We join these and there's our basic electromagnetic wave. So if on the other side we were to build a device that looks really similar to our motor over there, um, we would be able to capture this wave and reproduce it. So if we could do something like eh, similar length, similar dimensions and it goes through a variable capacitor and then into some kind of an inductor and on the other side we'd have another inductor this would effectively be an amp and so what you would get here is um, this electric field arranging electrons in here and driving them exactly the same way that these guys were driven so you have maybe sometimes hundreds of kilometers away, a signal going out in these waves like this, and another circuit similar to the one that transmitted them, um, picking up that signal, amplifying it, and translating these guys into pictures or sounds or whatever. And the next question you probably logically have is, how does this wave like carry information? Well, um, that's where letters like AM and FM come in. So AM would be amplitude modification and amplitude modification works a little like this. You essentially take these waves and you lower their amplitudes. So 
So when you lower an amplitude of a wave, that becomes a zero. That sucks. So if you lower an amplitude of a wave, that becomes a zero, which would make this wave a one and that wave a one. Um, you've also heard of FM. FM works a little like this. Um, if you get a wave tightly bunched up, that's a one. Loosely is a zero. Tightly bunched up is a one. Loose is a zero. Tightly bunched up is a one. So it goes like one, zero, one, zero. So effectively, um, what we can do on this end is modify these waves a little bit so that our antenna can pick it up and then we can translate this modified wave into a chain of zeros and ones and at the end of the day any message that we send uh, via digital circuits is simply going to be a bunch of zeros and ones which is read by a program that reinterprets that into computer code data and so on um, in this particular circuit uses something like something called OOK, which is on off keying. On off keying is very, very similar to um, AM actually. So it effectively has little tiny waves for zeros and big tall waves for ones. And unlike um, AM, I think on off keying uses square waves, so it's actually going to look like. But it's it's effectively the same thing so what else is there to know oh yeah so the only complicated part of this the only part of this that's actually difficult that I myself can safely say I don't really understand happens at this stage as I said radio frequency is ubiquitous these waves are absolutely everywhere and they interfere with each other all the time so if this very simple circuit that you could see, um, technically a message sent from one pin is replicated in another pin. If I was to try to read that message straight away as it's replicated, I would get a useless circuit because there would be too much noise. So all of this uh, is without mathematical algorithms that compute them, not very useful. Right here I can call this a black box. Right here is where mathematical geniuses come up with all kinds of esoteric maths and equations to process these waves that are then put into programs. Um, some of these are even adaptive. So you send an initial test signal and then a, an algorithm here is created by the computer that will uh, 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 filter out all the noise to find the signal. So yeah, this bit is fairly advanced, and this is why when we build Arduino circuits, we're going to be using a library. And that's what the library does. It filters through the noise. And um, yeah, that's it. That's how radio waves are transmitted. I hope you found it interesting. Now let's build a circuit.